In the previous video, I created a header file called adc.h, and I wanted to use that in the in my PWM program because I want to try a couple experiments. The first one is I want to just go ahead and plug in the PWM signal coming out of the PWM pin. I think it was PA11, and stick it right into the ADC channel zero or no, no I'm sorry, channel one pin, and see what measurements we can get from that from the ADC. So let's try that. First I need to get the ADC.h into this project. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to open up my file explorer and I'm going to go to my C and my users and I know that under my main user name I have co-ide and workspaces right there and I know I just made it under the ADC tutorial and the .h file should be under my app file. So I'm just going to do a copy and paste. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to workspaces. And I'm working with timers and counters right now. So I'm going to go under that app. And I'm going to paste it. And I think I made something temporary. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that file. It's a zero kilobyte, so I have no problem with that. OK, good. So now we can actually add it here. We can do an add files. And you can see that it's in the ADC tutorial, but we don't want to be there. We want to go to the workspaces, timers and counters, the app, and we're going to add the ADC.h. So we have it available here, and we want to add it to the include ADC.h. You can see it's available. And I'm going to go ahead and make the LCD work as well. We can. I think we have no conflictions, but we'll find out. I do want to change what's being sent to the LCD, obviously, because I'm not going to be considering the, the counter and prescaler. I'm going to be considering the ADC. So let's just say ADC output. And I'll put nothing on the next line. So the ADC outputs would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4, and 5. So I'll put it on the fifth location. And this one will be, we're not going to put anything here. But over here we want to put in the ADC. I think it was the DR. I think it was ADC1. Yeah, the DR. I think it was DR. Let me check just to make sure. Yep, that's it. So that's what we want to show. Let's go back to the other project. Timers and counters. OK, so we got that right. And it's going to be 5, position number 5 on the first line. All right. So all I should have to do is plug in the PWM output, which is going to be a voltage of some, some range. 0 to, I think, 3.2 volts is what we saw last time. And which one was that? It's PA11. Okay, PA11. Where is PA11? PA11 is here. Okay, so number 44. So we're going to connect pin number 44, which is PA11. We're going to connect that to pin number 15, is PA1, which is channel number 1. So let's go over here. I'm just going to plug in a pretty loose wire. So 44 is somewhere around here. Okay, 44 is this pin right over here. So the potentiometer from the previous project was removed and the wire going from pin 44 to pin 15. This is the ADC input. This is the PWM output. And let's see what the ADC shows from a PWM output. Okay, so now we have to flash the, the PWM microcontroller project. But we also have to add the ADC initialization in here. We haven't done that yet. So let's go ahead and initialize the ADC. And we're going to select the channel, channel select, and we're going to select channel 1. Okay, so we've selected ADC channel 1. So let's go ahead and see if the program still builds. Okay, I'm back over here at the ADC 
uh, project that we were doing before and I forgot to do the whole um, 80 start I'm just trying to get the number so let me copy this portion into the other program so let's go ahead and put that in here okay so now we're starting the ADC process and checking to make sure we're okay let's go ahead and do another build and flash you can see that the readout if you look at the uh, it's going from 0 to 4068 pretty much at the top end of the voltage it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing it's it is taking in a PWM signal and PWM is a square wave and it is the ADC is actually working a little bit too fast to take in a voltage from a PWM signal it is actually taking in the square wave and that's not what we want obviously and the only way to to be able to get a voltage out of a PWM is actually to add an RC circuit a resistor capacitor circuit to smooth it out to a a nice smooth voltage without an oscilloscope and and a little bit of research on what capacitor and resistor I would need to smooth out this let's go ahead and do the reverse I'm gonna hook up the potentiometer again and take the ADC number that we have, the digital number, and we're going to plug it into the PWM so we can cause the output voltage on the PWM to be variable according to the potentiometer setting. So let's go ahead and add the potentiometer back to the ADC pin here. This is pin number 15. So it looks like the ADC still works with the potentiometer. So I'm turning the potentiometer and we get a pretty good readout. So I also want to connect the multimeter to the PWM output so we can see what the output will be when we change the PWM duty cycle according to the analog to digital converter. So I still have the PWM connected to the 44 pin and I'm going to take my multimeter and just connect the positive lead to that pin and I'll connect the negative lead this is the positive lead going to that pin and then the negative lead I'm going to put to the negative rail so I have the duty cycle at 50 percent and on the multimeter it shows 1.5 which which makes sense so let's change the PWM duty cycle and just to make sure everything is working correctly. So we'll make it 2000 and we'll make this one 500 to get a 25% duty cycle. It's flash and it should be around 800, uh, 0.8. There we go. Good. So now let's take the analog to digital conversion, the ADC1DR, and let's plug this number into the CCR4. But we also have to understand that we have to look at the duty cycle limits from the ADC, because the ADC is a 12-bit number. So if we go back to the ADC, uh, hex to, well, let's just say, um, binary to decimal converter let's see what a 12-bit number would be in decimal 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay it's 4095 so that makes sense so let's go in here and make the period 4095 because that would be a 100% if the CCR4 value was, was 4095, that would be a uh, 100%. So we want to take the CCR value. Let's keep one here just to sort of initialize it. We'll make it 50%. So that's around 2000. And let's take another CCR and bring it in here. And I'm going to, actually I want to put it above the time delay, actually in the first part of it. 
No, I want to make sure that I have the ADCDR available to me when I'm using it. So I'm going to take the ADCDR. I'm going to copy it and put it right into the CCR4, which is the duty cycle number. And we'll see if we can change the PWM, the voltage coming out of that, by modifying the, the potentiometer. Let's check it out. Let's see if I can get everything in frame here. So we know what the ADC signal is. Let's go ahead and build the program and then flash it and see what happens to the voltage when I turn the potentiometer. So we can see that the ADC is about 2480. Let's turn the ADC, we'll turn the potentiometer. Let's go up. It looks like we're affecting the voltage. So we are changing the PWM signal by turning the, the potentiometer. And I'm turning it down now. So we're almost at ADC 400, 300, we're almost to the zero. I don't want to go all the way to zero. So we can see we got 0 0.142 volt it, volts. So let's turn it up again. You can see that we are getting, I'm going to go up all the way. So we got 3.1. Okay, so I turned it down. So it looks like we were successful in, in one portion of this video where we're affecting the PWM signal coming out. And you can you can just imagine the applications we could do with this by say having a a servo connected to the PWM signal coming out and by turning the potentiometer we can move the servo. So that's one application. Let me know in the comments of what other applications you think that we could use this. What kinds of devices do you think we could put to the output of the PWM? and being controlled by the ADC. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.